This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Mike Sedita. Hello out there. Welcome to episode 148 of the Good Neighbor Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Sedita. Today, we are joined by Brian Gross. He is the CEO of Art of Drawers. Brian, how are you doing today? I'm good, Mike. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. In case you don't know what the Good Neighbor Podcast is, if this is the first time you're hearing about it, let me just fill you in and get you up to speed. The Good Neighbor Podcast was started and created back in 2020 when everybody had to be socially distant. We couldn't be in the same room with each other as a way for business owners and CEOs like you to let the public know about what you had going on, what was going on with your business or your charity or whatever you had in the area. And now, four years later, it has evolved into a national brand. So we have podcasts in Denver, Atlanta, Virginia, Philadelphia. I'm fortunate enough to be the person here in Tampa that gets to speak to people like you. So with that said, tell us a little bit about Art of Drawers. Art of Drawers, um, we really specialize in offering pull-out drawers, pantries, uh, organization solutions for your kitchen and bathroom and the difference with our company is everything is custom design and custom fit to your existing cabinets. So you're, you're able to get those, those solutions, um, take care of some of those frustrating places in your kitchen without having to do that expensive full remodel or replacement of your existing cabinets. So let me ask you this question then. With, with what you guys do, uh, I know there's a lot of great technology, I, you know, like, especially like if I order something on Amazon, it'll say, see it in your room and you can kind of scan the room. Do you guys have that type of technology or if someone comes to you, do you send somebody out to look at what they have or is it generally pretty standard? I mean, we have a wide range of homes from, you know, from St. Pete to, you know, Wesley Chapel, uh, ages of homes and different modifications of the types of cabinetry. So how do you guys generally tackle that? No, we want that process to be more more engaging with our designers and and with the customer um, in your house. So, part of our the first step of our process is to always send a designer out to your house, complimentary, um, get an understanding for your space, your kitchen. Um, make sure you have an understanding of the solutions, the products that we offer, um, and figure out what would add the most value um, to your space. What would help you the most? So we can design a full kitchen. It might just be a few areas, um, but every since everything is customized, we'll go through, um, sketch that out, uh, design that with you um, as part of that first step before there's ever an installer or any, anything else like that. We want that to be a, a really, um, you know, hands-on experience with you, our designer, um, and make sure that you're getting exactly what would help you the most. And then, so where is your actual, do you guys have like, a, um, I, I'm assuming you have an office space, but do you also have a warehouse where you actually do the custom modifications? Where are you guys based out of physically? Yeah, we are based out of Tampa, Florida. So we have our warehouse um, and everything comes in and is installed um, our before installation uh, very close to the uh, Tampa airport, actually. Okay. I mean, that's a great location because you can go up the veterans, you can go 275, you kind of have a a spot to go everywhere. So your service area is from St. Pete to uh, Spring Hill and from, uh, you know, how far is the, the footprint where you guys will go or does it depend on the size of the job? We cover really the, the greater Tampa area. We have a, a pretty strong presence all the way out in Lakeland um, and, and some of the, the towns off of the Lakeland area. So typically about 75 miles um, every which way from Tampa. Um, and then, you know, if there is something that's, that's needed a little bit further out of our coverage area, uh, we try to be as flexible as possible. Okay. And then, so tell me, you know, Brian, a little bit about your background. I mean, were you a carpentry guy or are you a finance and logistics guy? Because there's a lot of moving parts that go into this business. There's the whole, you know, for lack of a better term, custom manufacturing side of what you guys do. But then there's also logistics of like, how many crews are you running and that type of stuff? And is your background in the field or are you the guy who said, I, this is a great opportunity, great market. Let me start this business here and take it to the next level. Yeah, that's a great question. The answer is definitely the, the latter of that explanation. So my background was actually in corporate finance. I always had a desire to be in the, the real estate design uh, type of field, working directly with customers. So with, with my role, I'm, I'm more behind the scenes, uh, running the business, the logistics, uh, the management of, of our teams. But uh, 
with, uh, you know, we have several crews. We have a team of designers that, that will go out, work with you, um, you know, make sure you're getting exactly what you want in your kitchen. And then we have a team of installers as well who come out, um, customize the measurements. Everything we do is custom fit. So measure down to the millimeter. So that team will come out um, once you're ready to move forward with Art of Drawers, um, do an exact measurement. And then they come back usually about four to six weeks later, once we've ordered everything, everything comes into that warehouse in Tampa um, and, and do that installation. And what's exciting is those installations are usually completed uh, within one business day. So in and out in, a, in less than a day. Well, you know, I can tell you, I talk to a ton of business owners and the, the analogy I always go back to is when I was a kid growing up, my brother was a chef, like he worked in all these nice restaurants and he used to say there's efficiencies in the kitchen. And it would be like, if you're going into the, the reefer, you always bring something in with you or you're always bringing something out. You never walk around the kitchen empty handed in your line of work. Having good quality craftsmanship is vital, obviously. But also the logistics side of it is crucially important from a material standpoint, from a workflow standpoint, marrying the two together. So do, it's essential to making sure your business is efficient. Do you also handle like the hiring of the, the folks that are actually in the field or do you have a whole HR team that does that part of it? No, I handle that myself. Um, you know, I, I personally hire, bring on everyone on both our design and installation teams and, you know, getting quality um, people on, on the team is just absolutely vital. Um, you know, having good communication, having designers who genuinely want to help. Um, we're not salespeople, you know, they're, they're designers want to understand your space and, and how we can add the most value. Um, and then our installers, um, you know, it's important that they're able to install, do quality work. Um, but again, you know, we pride ourselves in, in white glove service. So making sure that the design team, the, the install team, uh, they're communicating, they're, uh, they're working together from start to finish, but also that, that both of those folks are in touch with you from, from start to finish. So you know exactly where you are in the process, uh, what's next, and make sure that, that you are thrilled with your product uh, on, on installation day. You, you know, it's funny is with all this technology that we had, and I, I talked about like, you know, see it in your room, the things that they have with all the technology that we have in the world today, there is a, I don't want to say a backlash, but there is a, a yearning for people. Like people don't like voice trees when they call a company anymore. They like to actually get somebody on the phone. People don't like, I'll tell you for me personally, I recently moved my studio and all my stuff. I had multiple companies come out and price it for me. One company would not come out to, to the house to say, hey, this is what you do. And when I started to look at their quote versus the others, it was drastically different because they just didn't have that tangible connection. And I didn't have a warm and fuzzy feeling and I didn't go with that company. So I love the fact that you're kind of, I don't want to say retro because it sounds like it's something old, like it's like not up to date, but it's using modern technology, but giving that personalized connection to the consumer makes a huge, huge difference in how you connect your brand in the areas where you do your work. Do you find um, from a customer satisfaction standpoint that helps you to mitigate? Because listen, in a business, I talk to every business owner, there's always those things that go on. There's always those snafus or stuff. There's meeting with the client up front help eliminate or minimize some of the communication issues? And does it help you to create that connection where you now have a, a referral source or, you know, some of the things that we kind of lose when we have that non-personal connection? Yeah, I, you know, I think that's critical for, for our business. You know, we meet, we, we have a strong presence here in the community and we're in a lot of the, the big home shows around the area. We do a lot of events. So we meet a lot of our customers in person from that first meeting where they they come into our our booth they, they see our products and they request an appointment uh, from right there so you know i always try to work those myself so you know that's where you know as, as the ceo the owner of the, the local business you know a lot of our customers meet me actually first um when a designer comes out you know they're reaching out on their personal cell phone they, they have their cell phone number to to reach out communicate those follow-up questions um the installer same thing you know they have their cell phone so a lot of times we're even communicating with with customers um, through text or it'll be a, a call, but we try to make sure that everyone that they're working with and myself 
um, that we're here, we're visible, we're available every step of the way. So let me ask you this. I mean, how long have you guys been in business here in Tampa? In Tampa, we've been in business for uh, for about two years. Um, and then our corporate office, we started back in 2018. So uh, corporate is in Atlanta. So uh, the Art of Drawers has about a five-year track record. So what is one of the things in, in your time doing this, whether you know through your corporate experience or here in Tampa specifically, what do you run into with clients where they have like, they might think it's one thing, but it's something different, like a myth, a myth or a misconception you run into where when you're meeting with people, you have to explain to them. I mean, the one I would think of, and again, I'm just throwing one out that I might have would be like, this is going to be so expensive. I mean, we know kitchen remodels can range thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 if you're going to gut something and start from scratch. But, I, you know, maybe I come in and look at this and go, wow, this is going to be a big undertaking and it's maybe not as expensive. Like, where are you educating consumers the most? There's really two and, and you hit one. But the, the first, I'd say, is there's a misconception that to get the organization, to get pullouts, get that kind of customized kitchen experience, that you have to replace all your cabinets or do that full kitchen remodel which we all know can be really expensive. So, so that's what's nice about being able to go custom fit their existing cabinets. Um, the second is that that price point is, I'm not sure how much this will, will cost, or you know, this might end up being more expensive than, I, than I'd really like to pay. And that's the, really the important piece of having a designer come out. Uh, we don't have to do every drawer, every, every cabinet in your kitchen. That's where we wanna know, you know what are the pain points? What areas are frustrating you? Or what are those maybe those dead corners or those those half shelves that you can't access? And that's where we'll focus on start first. And you know, if, if you are working on a budget, we want to make sure that we're really maximizing the value, you know, and the joy you get from from the money you're spending. So two questions come up as you as you say that for me is is one of the most common things you fix like that annoying lazy Susan in a corner of a cabinet? I guess because that's got to be like. It's like somebody just said, hey, we have this corner space that you can't get into from any angle. Let us create that. Are you fixing a lot of those or are you kind of adding those? What is the what is the lazy what is the position on lazy Susans around the art of drawers? We we do have lazy Susans. We do um, the, the the dreaded um, dead space that that corner is one that we get a lot of questions about. Um, we have several solutions. You know, some are uh, some are the, the lazy Susans, different uh, versions of that to uh, to at least get more access in the space. Um, we also have a few solutions that are a little bit more exciting with uh, with drawers that actually pull back, that pull out from from the back corner, so you can uh, start to actually access uh, access that space that that was you know almost impossible before before a solution. You know, it's funny in our show research, you know, we don't do a lot of show research here, but when we do it, you know, the, the, the term lazy Susan, you know, came about in the 50s and 60s. And it was translated from the 18th century England when it was just known as a dumb waiter. So I don't know how poor Susan got roped into this, but it was the translation from that. So that my second question would be, has there been an instance where you guys have gone into somebody's kitchen and said, you know what, we can't fix this you're gonna have to gut this bad boy and go for like where maybe it's a real older smaller space and there's not a lot of opportunity to modify where they're just gonna have to knock down a wall to get the space that they need have you ever run into that you know what is nice is you know being custom we're, there's a lot of spaces we can be pretty flexible we have um, you know, we can get pretty creative, um, especially in lower cabinets with being able to do cutouts around plumbing, around wiring. Right. Um, you know, so, so we do have a, a lot of, a lot of things that we can do, but, uh, we will be very honest with, with customers. And, you know, we were just at an appointment earlier this week where I was out with a designer and they had a kind of a frustrating space under an Island, a lot of space that was just not usable looking for a solution. Um, and there was, uh, there's plumbing, there was electrical, um, cause there was some space that, that wasn't usable, you know, we had to say, Hey, you know, this is, there's nothing that we can really do here. That's going to be worth the money that, 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 you know, it would take to, right. to add in a pullout or a custom solution. So we actually just left it how it was. So yeah. we'll never hesitate to tell someone it's, you know, it's not the best space to, to work with. And honestly, like that is like <clears throat> a situation like that to me is like branding your business. Okay. So like, 
to brand your business, you have to do that consistent branding to grow your name and grow your, you know, your reach. That type of situation is an equivalent of that, in my opinion, because here's what it, it, what happens in that scenario. You went in and you were honest with them and explained to them what goes on. So now when someone asks them about your business, they're going to go, you know what? They couldn't help me with this specific space, but they were up front and explained to me how to do it. It's like going to a mechanic and saying, hey, I think I need new brakes. And the mechanic says, no, you don't need new brakes. You just need this. And giving them an honest, it, it reflects positively on your brand image. And it just has a, a wider spread reach than the money you would have made trying to finagle something into their kitchen. To me, that's the type of thing that establishes the good brands from the brands that are just trying to do a money grab and take what they can get from that one customer. So definitely kudos for, for doing that, because I think I think that's a better approach to your business, in my opinion, as someone who deals with thousands of businesses, you know, every month. So let me ask you this. <clears throat> when you're not in the office and you're not, you know, uh, logistically moving trucks from Lakeland to Ocala and all around this 75 mile area, what do you like to do for fun? Are you are you a water skier? Do you climb mountains? Do you skydive? What do you do when you're not in the office, Brian? Well, you, you set the expectations high there with the example. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sound pretty lame, but, uh, but I do love being outside. You know, one of my favorite things about living here in Florida is being active pretty much uh, 12 months out of the year. Yeah. So I, I live, uh, live here uh, in Tampa, so bike a lot, usually out uh, around on, on Bayshore. Um, last couple of years, I've also joined the pickleball craze, which uh, I think is kind of taking Oh, over you're years, that guy. So, so All right. Having, having a lot of fun with that one as well. All right, so 22nd time out here. Are you in like a pickleball league? Like if you let me ask you this. If you drop a shot on some old lady on the pickleball court and do you taunt them or are you just kind of like, oh, like, nice shot? When you like slam it down, you're like, yeah, get in their face. How what is your pickleball, you know, stance as far as how you handle your your I'm, game? I'm pretty competitive. So uh I'll say so I So you're a trash talker. You know, especially, you know, it's funny you use the the example old lady. Um, you know, it's typically you know you are in like these mixed games with people that are 20, 30, 40 years older. So I try not to like throw out, throw it down with the racket and, and smack talk too much. But uh, I'll, I'll, internally though, uh, I'm I'm pretty excited. I, yeah, I get pretty. Pumped. Yeah, take take yeah. that, grandma. Exactly. All right, I got you. I, I see. So pickleball and biking. Uh, yeah, I was just down in I was down in Davis Island a couple of weeks ago, and there was a big biking event going on. They had all the streets closed off and stuff. Were you in on that? Is that the type of biking you do? I was not. No, I, I missed that. I haven't gotten into the competitive biking. I'm oh, okay. Out, out on, on the casual rides and enjoying the view. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I like that too. I'm going to have to, where I, I live now, there's some trails and stuff that I need to get into to get a little bit more uh, activity. I just, every time I think of biking, I think of a couple of spin classes I've taken and I leave there like I was riding a, like Yellowstone. Like I was Kevin Costner on Yellowstone. I leave there and I can't walk for two days. So that's what my fear is of biking, but I'm going to have to work through some of that stuff and get out and be a little bit more active. Um, so one of the questions I like to ask business owners, because this <clears throat> does two things. It, the, the, it, it lets the people who are the consumers who are listening to this get a little bit more relatable to you as a business owner. You're not just a business owner. You're, you know, you're, you're a person who kind of goes through stuff. And the other business owners that are listening to this, it gives them an example of how to overcome and take their business to the next level. So one of the things I like to ask is, where has there been a challenge or you know, maybe a hardship that you've experienced in your life or your business career, personal, professional, that, you're, that you wanna tell us about and how did you overcome it and take, you know, get past it to be able to be in the position you are today? Yeah, you know, I think really going back, I grew up in rural southeast Missouri, and uh, it's where most people, they work in farming, there's factory jobs, um, a pretty uneducated area. And I was actually the first in my family to go to college, to, 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 leave, uh, to leave that town uh, and really do something like start a business. Um, and that wasn't always easy. You know, worked, worked my way through college, um, learned a, a lot of life lessons along the way of of when you're spending your own money, it's a little bit different. But uh, you know that really taught me the the benefit, the value of of working hard, um, treating people right, and it's opened up a lot of opportunities for me personally and professionally. And it's I think it's given me the opportunity to to be where I am today here, uh, running this business. 
So, I mean, your family's got to be super proud of you. How do you end up going from Southern Missouri to, did you have a pit stop in Atlanta and then here, or you just came from Missouri right to here? I, I've lived uh, several parts of the country and uh, I've spent time in, in Dallas, uh, Washington, D.C., and Boston. And, you know, uh, I think probably a lot of your listeners, is, they probably figured out before I did, Florida is a great place to live. You know, you spend a spend a few winters in in New England and up on in the Northeast, and uh, also yeah. Florida. Florida's pretty appealing, so uh, made my made my way here, and uh, couldn't be happier that I did. Okay, so you're from Missouri though, and you've traveled you know all over the U.S. Do you follow sport? I mean, you're a competitive guy. Do you follow sports? Are you a Chiefs fan? Are you a Rams fan? Because they spent some time in that neck of the woods. Do you not follow football? Are you a big Royals fan? I mean, where where your loyalties lie in the athletic world? Yeah, in the, in the athletic world, you know, it's funny. I have uh, grew up uh, just south of St. Louis, so that's uh, it's Cardinals nation. So uh, it's been a while since I lived there, but they still still follow the Cardinals. Um, football, they're you know, like the number two. I mean, everybody sh- they won't shut up about the Yankees. I can't stand hearing about the Yankees, right. but the Cardinals are like that next team. That's the next team. That's right. That's right. And, uh, you know, I grew up with the, the Rams before they made the move to L.A. So that, you know, I've, I've moved after that happened. So that's uh, I don't really have a an NFL team. So I need to pick up uh, I need to pick up the Bucks. You know, I'm, I'm looking for a new team. But uh, season tickets, you can get some right. season tickets. The hard part with the Bucks is when you are sitting out there. Now, it's just the opposite extreme. I hate shoveling snow, but sitting at a Bucks game in September on the sunny side of the stadium you might as well be a piece of bacon just sitting out there oh, frying. God. It is awful. But, you know, I mean, listen, last year was a good season. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a Bucks. I'm a I'm like a a secondary Bucks fan because I live here. But yeah, I mean, they the games are great. The, the atmosphere is great down there. You're going to have to jump on the jump on the pirate ship. Exactly. Exactly. So, as we start to kind of wind this up, what is the one thing? If I'm a listener, I'm a consumer and I have these old cabinets in my house. Um, what is the one thing they need to know about working with the art of drawers? I think the one thing just to, to know, and, and we've hit on today, but we're locally owned, we're locally operated. Um, our solutions are available to everyone. You know, we offer that that free consultation with a designer as a starting point. Um, so you, you can see exactly how we can help you. And everything that, that we bring to the table that, that we look to do uh, fits in your existing kitchen, um, your existing cabinets. So it doesn't have to be a big a big remodel, a big project. Um, we can really add a lot of value um, uh, pretty easily um, without without tearing apart or uh, being a, a big remodel expense. Adding value and efficiency, and, and you know, making the mm-hmm. the space you spend your time in. I mean, people spend a lot. I mean, the bedroom is probably number one. Just sleeping for eight hours if you're lucky enough to get eight hours. Uh, but the kitchen is probably the next room in the house where people spend the most amount of time and gaining efficiencies and making it a pleasant experience when you're in there. What is the best way, you know, Brian, if we want to get started today, if people listening to this podcast say, hey, look, you know what? Our kitchen stinks. We need to be more efficient. We need to make the space more valuable. How do they get a hold of you? What's the best way? Yeah, two, two real ways. Um, welcome everyone to check out our website, and that's artofdrawers.com. Or you can reach out um, and schedule a design appointment directly. And that's at 813-993-0397. So, guys, if you're listening to this, the Art of Drawers is based out of Tampa. Their warehouse is here. They customize all the work. They will go to about a 75-mile radius around the city of Tampa. No job is too small. They will give you the personal attention that you need in this remodel and not break the bank without having to gut your kitchen and start from scratch. So if you're interested in getting started, go to artofdrawers.com or contact their office directly. The number is 813-993-0397. Brian Gross, thank you for being a good neighbor. Thank you for being on the Good Neighbor Podcast. You have an excellent day, my friend. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Pasco. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gnppasco.com. That's gnppasco.com or call 813-922-3610.